Come on in, I'll show you the new office. Wait, you'd rather have one of those hype reels with the overly energetic electronic music and the goofy zoom angles and all that stuff? All right, I'll do it your way. Cue the hype reel. Now that we have that out of the way, let me give you a little bit more of a detailed tour and explain how I designed this office, some of the choices I made and some of the products that I used and ultimately selected. And nothing in here is sponsored, everything I paid for with my cold hard cash. I will say that I was influenced by some of the other, you know, office porn type videos that are out there. And some of the products I, I quite liked and some of them I was, you know, frankly a little bit disappointed with. But I'll talk you through that as we go through the tour. Now, like any of my how-to or design style videos, don't do exactly what I did. I mean, you can if you want, but hopefully my goal is to give you some ideas, not to give you some sort of prescriptive, this is absolutely how you have to design your home office type of video. And a lot of that depends on what you do in your office and some of the context of how and where and when and why you work. In my case, I have an executive role at a large Fortune 500 type of company. And that means that the majority of my time is spent doing video calls, it's spent presenting to various people, it's spent creating PowerPoints and slides and spreadsheets and documents that you know, I then share and review and adjust and get feedback on and all that sort of thing. And then you know, a couple times a month they let me out of the house and I go and travel around and see some of my teams in various spots throughout the world. So this is an office that's designed for those type of activities. And if you're doing a whole bunch of creative work or video editing or something like that, you might wanna tweak things. If you're a software developer, you might wanna tweak things a bit. And you know, some of my commentary around why I went with a single monitor, why I set up my desk the way it is, may not be relevant for you if you've got a little bit of a different role. But my hope is to give you some ideas, not to give you a prescriptive thing on, you know, here's how you should set up your office. Now with that disclaimer in mind, there were essentially three things I wanted to accomplish when I set out to redo my home office. Probably the most important was I wanted a space where when I came in in the morning, it just brought me calm, it brought me focus, and it made me ready to work. My previous office had sort of descended into a bit of a state of chaos. I had all sorts of stuff everywhere. A lot of the wood and the paint and everything was a little bit dark. And I just kind of come in in the morning and you know feel that little bit of subconscious tension. So I wanted to be very conscious in designing something that didn't have a lot of clutter, that you know, again, kind of brought you that peace. And there's a whole bunch of theory and psychology around this that I'm not smart enough to understand. But I think all of us have experienced that to some extent. You know, If you go into a place of worship, if you go into an art museum or something like that, you kind of feel that nice, like, ah, calm. And I wanted to create that in my, my home office space. The second thing I wanted to do was kind of use this concept of stations. And I've got a video about how to design your home office and some of the thought process I went through, so I won't belabor that here, and I will put a link to that you know, somewhere up in the ether out there. But ultimately, I wanted to be thoughtful about the kinds of activities I would do in the office and wanted to structure it so that you know, each part of the office had some sort of purpose and supported some sort of activity. Along those lines, I also wanted to make sure that the things that I needed for that particular activity were close at hand, and there wasn't any extra junk. You know, previously I kind of set up my office as, you know, I have a drawer with all the pens and pencils, I have a drawer with all the supplies and kind of grouped stuff together in terms of, you know, how it logically related to each other. In this case, I wanted to only have things I needed close at hand. So, you know, my standing desk, I don't have any drawers in there. I have one little, you know, pull out tray that I 3D printed and, you know, kind of use this tray concept in various parts of the office. And all that's in there is a couple pens, a set of post-its, and that's about it. And that's due to the fact that as I thought through, you know, how do I actually use my desk? I didn't need all that crap, you know, within arm's reach. I didn't need envelopes, I didn't need stamps, all that stuff. You know, I mail things maybe once every 60 days. So I tried to, you know, cut down on the things that were not related to the type of work I did in that particular space. And the final thing I wanted to try out was to actually kind of try my hand at interior design, you know, design in general, whatever you want to call it. I've always appreciated a well-designed space. You know, I've walked into hotels or restaurants or something and you can kind of look around and 
I get this sense that, wow, somebody really thought about how to put this together. I don't have any kind of background in that. I don't have any sort of skill set in that area other than you know, that vague appreciation of, of well-designed spaces. And I wanted to try it myself. You know, I wanted to actually have a space where I thought through how do I want this to look? How do I want things to work? You know, what kind of style and materials do I want to use and how do I make this all fit together versus all my previous offices were essentially, you know, what functionality do I need? I need a desk. Okay, go pick a desk. I need a printer. Okay, go pick a printer. And didn't really think about the whole setup as an overall system. You know, more is just a sort of collection of random stuff. And I think that's what I tried to do differently this time. I tried to think in terms of, you know, how do all these pieces fit together to make a whole? And hopefully that worked. You know, you can be the judge of that and you know, maybe apply some of this to your space or you know, say, hey, whatever this jabroni did, didn't quite work out here. So I've got a good lesson to apply to my space. So one of the first things I did in refurbishing this office was I added some more lighting. Lighting was always a challenge in here before. You know, there was just a ceiling fan with some light bulbs in it and that didn't really work that well. I retrofit some track lights that worked relatively well, but they you know, looked a little janky, didn't quite like the look. So I retrofitted a whole bunch of can lights. They're these new wafer style LED lights. They're fairly straightforward to put in. They bring a whole bunch of light in here. I have them on a dimmer so I can adjust that light as I need. And that was frankly a great upgrade. You know, I have all the light I want in here and you know, I think thinking about lighting is, uh, is one thing that's worth doing as you upgrade your office since it can be frustrating if it's too dark or the lighting's too harsh or whatever. And maybe there's a simple upgrade for your office where you throw a dimmer in there or you add some lamps or you just kind of think through how you want that space lit. While I was messing around in the ceiling, I also decided to upgrade my fan to something that looked a little more modern and a little bit more compact and less imposing and fit with the rest of the design. And also added some speakers in the ceiling. You know, I like to have a little background music when I'm working. Occasionally I'll listen to a podcast or something like that, but I, I like that background music and I like having my you know, audio stuff hidden. I'm not one of those people that likes to have big giant speakers and you know, I know some people enjoy that look, but you know, for me it's the more I can kind of hide that audio and have it blend into the background, the better. In terms of you know, general infrastructure and general upgrades, I also tried to be a little bit more conscious and thoughtful about hiding cords. You know, I think that led to some of the general feeling of chaos in my old office. There were you know, cords running everywhere around the desk. It wasn't all that organized or anything like that. So this time, you know, I was a little bit more thoughtful on organizing the cords under my desk. I didn't do anything super fancy or you know, there's all sorts of crazy things you can buy for cable management is what the cool kids call it. And essentially just to use the stuff that came with my desk that amounted to some double-sided tape and some zip ties. But I think it, it worked overall pretty effectively. You know, I walk in, I have one outlet that plugs in for my desk and a whole bunch of little power strip type deals under there that kind of power all the various and sundry things that you need for a, a modern desk. So let me walk you through the four stations that I set up in this office and I'll save the desk for last because that's kind of the most complex and you know, maybe for some people the most exciting. So the first station I set up was, you know, what I call supplies, mail and printing and kind of general stuff that I don't use all that often. And one of my goals that I set out for on this office was to try and use, you know, US made materials or kind of crafted materials versus mass market type stuff. And probably the place I failed in that goal the most dramatically was in my, you know, mailing and printing station. You know, obviously most of the electronics don't come from the USA anymore. And this is the one place where I use sort of the ubiquitous and generic Ikea Alex cabinet. You know, these things are everywhere. What I did do to make this a little more custom and you know, fit in with the office decor a little bit more was I went on Etsy and there's a whole bunch of people that sell little you know, vinyl stick on things you can put in the drawers. I got this you know, paint chip style thing that I think looks kind of cool and gives the office a little bit of flavor. But this is the spot where I store all my supplies. I've got pens, pencils, business cards, you know, mailing stuff, envelopes, packing materials. I've got in one of the larger drawers some random tripods and things that were a little too big to fit anywhere else. And all stuff that I find myself using, you know, maybe once a week at most. I also have a couple spots for the kids' artwork above the mail station. These are some pretty cool frames and I'll you know, link to all this stuff as I usually do down in the show description. But you can flip open the lid of the frame, put a new piece of paper in there, it kind of sits on top of what's previously in there. And that way when the kids bring home something cool, I can very easily put it up there. You know, previously I used thumbtacks, which worked okay, but then after a little while, the artwork would sort of sag on the corners and thumbtacks looked a little you know, more janky than a, an actual nice picture frame. So that was a pretty nice little upgrade. 
Second key station in my office is, you know, what I call the reading slash meditating slash people I like corner, for lack of a better phrase. And I put a nice recliner in here. This is a space where I had a big leather recliner in my previous office. And, you know, what I liked about that chair sitting there in the corner was it's naturally where people sit when they come in. I guess it's the only place you can sit when people come in. But if my wife came in to chat with me, she would sit there. If the kids came in to chat with me, they would sit there. And I could kind of turn a little bit from my desk and you know, I would have a lot of nice or meaningful or you know, sometimes challenging conversations with people I liked you know, with them sitting in that chair. So I wanted to keep that set up. I thought that worked really well. But I upgraded the chair. I wanted something a little less imposing and kind of, you know, big leather, executive, 1930s, whatever. So I went with something a little more modern. It's made in North Carolina, so it fit that box of, you know, locally made where possible. I have a 1960s solid wood coffee table. So, you know, that also fit the, you know, the recycling made in the USA sort of theme. And I put a plant there. So it has this nice organic feel. You know, again, it looks clean, it looks nice. It doesn't have that big imposing feeling of the, the chair I had there before. And when I come in in the morning, you know, sometimes I'll sit there and do a 10 minute meditation. If in the middle of the day, I just need a little bit of a break or change of scenery or something, I'll shift over to that chair. If I have to read a long document, I can sit there and, and go through that. So it's just kind of nice to have this little you know, mechanism where you can change your scenery just by moving five or six feet and get a little motion in your day and kind of change things up. The third station is what you see behind me and that's kind of my storage slash opening mail and processing mail and that sort of thing kind of station for lack of a better phrase. I've got a whole elaborate review on this shelving system which is from a company called Vitsu. They're a little bit of a Nietzsche design oriented kind of firm. But I really couldn't find anything that was quite like this. And it's stupidly expensive, quite frankly, but you know, at the end of the day, I think it's worth it. You know, the stuff is nicely made, all the drawers are soft clothes, you know, just feels like a well-made piece of stuff. And theoretically, all the shelves can be removed from the wall. I can rearrange them and move them around. I can add and subtract things. And if and when we move out of here, I can theoretically again take it all off the wall and, and take it with me, which is nice. I like that it has that floating shelf look, you know, again, that keeps things clean and light and I think makes the office feel a lot more spacious than it actually is. And I have a few little things that I put in here intentionally that I'll, I'll talk you through because I think they might be interesting or helpful for you. The first off is I wanted to have a big chunk of counter space. And in particular, you know, I, like most humans out there, get a whole ton of mail, you know, a whole bunch of BS to sort through, some of it, you know, 4% of it important, 96% of it stuff that needs to be shredded or thrown away. And so I have these little three aluminum inbox trays. And this is the one piece of Vitsu stuff that you know, feels a little less quality for the price point than some of the other things. I do like they put a little felt on the bottom so you can kind of slide it in and out and it fits perfectly in the space. But I have a spot that's kind of my inbox where my wife and the kids will throw all the stuff. I have one that I use for things I need to scan eventually and things I need to file. But what I like is I can take everything out of those boxes. I can lay it out in front of me on that counter space. I can be standing, so kind of actively moving around, sort through and figure out what I need to do with all this stuff, file it appropriately, take the junk to the trash, take the shred stuff to the shredder. And it's just a nice way to kind of go through that stuff without cluttering up my main desk. I'll also use this counter space if I have a little project that's going on, you know, maybe if I'm working on some electronic thing or, you know, assembling slides or storyboarding something and I can kind of leave it there, leave it in peace and then not have it occupy my primary workspace, which is nice. I also tried to have, you know, good solid hidden storage in here. I have a bunch of my, you know, running stuff since usually I'll do some work in the morning, then I'll kind of switch up and go out for a run. So I, you know, I tend to keep my running shoes in here and you know, I have my nutrition, I have some of my water bottles and that sort of thing. So I can just grab that, scoot out the front door and get my run on. I have my camera stuff here, you know, some of it sort of on display and I know it's a little bit hackneyed to have the you know, old fashioned camera set up on YouTube, but these are cameras from my grandfather. So they have some sentimental value as well as my own cameras that I use on a somewhat routine basis. And I have this nice drop down Vitsu shelf where the lid kind of falls down, gives you a little bit of a workspace. And I have a lot of my weird kind of small camera stuff in there. Things like GoPro mounts, tripods, cables, all that. And so I can kind of go shopping, like if I'm going out to film something remotely or we're going on a trip, I flip that lid down, kind of assemble all the things I need. I can see them, have them in front of me, and then I can put those in a bag and be ready to go. 
that I think really worked out well. And that's one of the neat things about this Vitsu system is there's three or four different ways you can store stuff and you know, a bunch of options to configure that. You can put shelves inside and that sort of thing. So you can really kind of tweak it and customize it and make it your own. Another thing I did with the shelving is I pared down my books quite a bit. I know it was trendy for a while to have you know these monster bookshelves and some people went so far as to color coordinate the books, which I always thought was a little bit persnickety. But I really wasn't using a lot of my books. You know, most of the stuff I read today, I read on the Kindle, primarily because I like having a book with me wherever I am versus you know, having to worry about the physical thing. But I was saving all these books, you know, partially so I'd look smart. You know, I felt like if I had you know, big meaningful titles on my shelf, it somehow made me smarter than not having those. And at the end of the day, it was just sort of useless clutter. So I donated most of my books to the local library. They seemed to be happy to take that sort of stuff. And I pared down to you know, some very basic essentials. And I think that helped a lot in reducing clutter. And it gave me some of the shelf space, you know, the open space of which I use for kind of display and you know, collectible type stuff. And then the hidden space I use for you know, things I don't wanna be out and don't wanna be cluttering up my space. One other thing I did was add this Etsy you know, walnut clothes hanger slash mail storage slash place to put your keys. And what I use this for primarily is, you know, in the mornings when it's cool like it is today, I'll put a hoodie on. And then in my old office, I'd kind of throw it on the chair and it would lend to that feeling of clutter and I would end up not using the chair because it'd be, you know, stacked with three coats. So now I have a place where I can put those hoodies, you know, if I come in in the morning and it's cold, I'll put something on, you know, I have a little hat in there if it's, if it's cold as well. And then as the day warms up, I can take it off. It has a place where I can put it. I'll put my running water bottle up there. I'll put some sunglasses and that sort of thing up there. And it's stuff that, yes, I have other places in the house where I could put coats, but it's nice having a thing that I use in the office every day at hand in a place that's nice and, you know, using a, an element that you, know, you could get a $5 command strip stick on type hook at Lowe's or Home Cheapo. But you know, I've got this nice walnut thing that was built by somebody in the US out of real wood that looks nice and adds a little bit to the decor of the office. Now, the final piece of my office, of course, is the desk. I used a desk from a company called Desk House, H-A-U-S. Despite the German sounding name, they're located in Michigan. I think they make the tabletop in the USA. I got a complete kit from them that essentially has this walnut tabletop and the legs, I think they weld locally, but the motors are from some company in China, which seems to be par for the course. But that kind of sort of checked my, you know, made in the USA where possible type of box. These days I find myself primarily using my MacBook, despite the fact that I have both a MacBook and a Windows-based desktop. And that's primarily for ease of use. And it's also because I can do all my work stuff on there as well as all my personal stuff. It's a device that I own. And now that you know, the Microsoft 365 platform kind of lets you do company stuff from more or less anywhere, that works out pretty well. I have a nice Dell 4K monitor that allows me to switch between those two computers pretty easily. And it'll switch over the keyboard, mouse, and all the peripherals. So if I do need to do work on the Windows machine, I hit a couple buttons on the monitor, all my stuff sort of clicks over in a couple seconds and I can work away on that with my same webcam, same keyboard, same mouse. And when I'm ready to go back to using my MacBook, a couple taps again, and everything flips back over. So that works quite nicely. On top of that monitor, I have a Link360 camera. I did get that free, so that is one thing in here that's, I guess, sponsored. I did it for a review for some of the outlets where I write. And I like that a lot, both because it's high quality and it's essentially kind of like a drone camera. It's on a little gimbal. So when I put the desk in standing mode, the camera you know, by default would sort of cut off the top of my head. But with this gimbal functionality, I can either hit a button or make this weird sort of hello gesture and it'll refocus on my face. Then when I go back to sitting mode on the desk, you know, it'll kind of follow me and track me appropriately. You can see I obviously went for some color coordination on some of my peripherals. I went and got new speakers from Edifier. I'm not a huge audio guy in terms of computer sound. These seem good enough. They have a neutral sound, so they're good for editing YouTube videos without it getting you know, overly bassy or something like that. And I also reused a Belkin wireless charger in white for my previous setup. I have all that stuff on top of a Grovemade stand, and this was totally a you know, YouTube influencer hype beast kind of purchase. Everyone seemed to have Grovemade stuff and rave about it. I got it kind of in the midst of the pandemic, so I don't know if I just you know, had a, a bad batch or if you know, things are just a little less impressive in person from them than they seem on the internet. But I wasn't wildly impressed with the finish. You know, I think at the time I bought it, it said it was walnut. It ended up being walnut plywood. I believe now they have a plywood or a solid wood option, 
but the finish wasn't great. And I ultimately went and refinished it with some Danish oil, which I think worked out okay-ish for relatively minimal effort. But it's essentially a hunk of plywood, these two sort of rubbery, plasticky, foamy corners, and then a little metal shelf in there. And I think I paid way more than the sum of the parts. But what I really like about this thing is it kind of gives you a little garage under your monitor. And I keep things in there that I like to have close at hand, but don't want cluttering up my desk. Things like my stapler, things like my scotch tape, and then I have a big honkin' Casio calculator. And you may think that's a little bit retro or okay boomery, but if you're looking at a PowerPoint with a whole bunch of numbers, you know, if you're trying to kind of double check some stuff on a spreadsheet, it's great to be able to pull out a calculator and you know, bang on that stuff. If you're somebody that has to do weekly timesheets or something like that, it's a nice way to sort of check your work and make sure you put in the right number of hours or do some simple arithmetic and things like that. I also have a wool felt mat under the keyboard. The goal there is to be able to move the keyboard around and it also sort of doubles as a mouse pad. You know, this is nice if you wanna work on something on that desk surface, you can just sort of slide everything up. You know, you can slide it to the left, slide it to the right, do the hokey pokey and turn yourself about or whatever you need to do. I previously had one from Grove Made that I've moved out to my other office which worked pretty well. This one I got from Etsy from some company in Canada, and it seems a little thicker, a little nicer quality, but it's also a little bit itchier and seems to kind of let out a little more dust. So I'm not sure if, you know, Grove Made does something more effectively on those, those wool mats, or you know, maybe this one's more natural or who knows. But the light gray kind of fits in with the color scheme. And again, you get that ability to move your keyboard and mouse around fairly easily. Obviously, as I mentioned, this is a standing desk. I do find that I like the standing functionality. I've integrated this into my automation system, which is total nerd fest type stuff, which you know everyone needs to get their nerd on every now and then so I can track how much I stand each day. I have it send me a little reminder if I haven't done any standing. So I try and get in a good 30 to 60 minutes of standing when I'm sitting at my desk, particularly on a longer day, particularly on phone calls. I think when you're on a Teams conference, being standing gets you a little more engaged with the person you're talking to. and just kind of keeps the blood moving and keeps your focus a little more. In terms of chairs, I have a steel case chair in here that I brought over from the previous office. I'll put a link down to it. I forget the exact model and brand. It's pretty comfortable and I generally like it, except it's super squeaky. And there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet on how you can you know, mitigate that squeak and do sort of all sorts of things. It's got like a 20 year warranty or something. So theoretically I can send it back to Steelcase, but that's probably the only minor annoyance with this chair. Other than that, it's pretty decent. Other general interesting things, instead of doing the traditional Persian style rug, which I had in here before, and it you know, seems kind of like what most people put in their office, I decided to do a natural cowhide. You know, some people may get bent out of shape about that, but for me, I'm somebody that enjoys eating meat. I have no qualms about eating meat, and you know, this is a hide that otherwise would go to waste, presumably, since it's from a cattle that was already going to be used to feed somebody somewhere. So it kind of felt like an interesting decor choice, fit within the vibe I was going for, and to some extent was using something that maybe would have been otherwise discarded. That seemed to work with my overall theme. So hopefully you got some ideas out of this. You know, so far it's been about four months since I've had this office done. I've worked in here just about every day over the course of those four months. Nothing I'd really change and tweak so far. You know, I do find myself moving some things around in terms of maybe something is there that I thought I'd use every day and I don't. So I've kind of moved it to a more storage type location over in the mail and storage section of the office. There are a few things that I want a little closer. You know, I find myself needing my glasses a little more. So I move those a little bit, a little bit closer to my desk. But overall, I've been very happy with the setup. If you found anything that's been particularly effective in your home office, throw that down in the comments. If you have any questions about any of the materials or any of the stuff that I've used in here, again, I'll try and list everything out in the show description, but throw it in the comments. I respond to everyone that's reasonable and not a bot trying to sell crypto or something like that. So see you down there. Best of luck in your working from home endeavors. Best of luck as you redesign your office. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've got some tips. Check out that office design video. You know, mash the subscribe button and I will keep the office content coming. And this is the Big Heavy wishing you well, much productivity, and of course, much peace.